Hey guys, Gunshy Mori back here with another video. So today we are going to be looking at a mod map known as the Sunken Worlds. And if you've been paying attention here to the community crunches here recently, or pay, looked at anything off of uh, the PAX event, you would have noticed that the Sunken Worlds, along with one other mod, uh, which I believe was Paleoark, got added into the sponsored mod program. Now, if you don't know what the sponsored mod program is, that is basically Wildcard's program to help add in more content via mods to ARC. Now, sometimes these creations were taken and added into base games, such as many of the maps, such as Crystal Isles, Lost Islands, Ragnarok, The Center, all of those ones down there. Those were all mod maps that were originally added into the sponsored mod program. Now, though, that they have announced Fenyordor as the last map for Ark, the first Ark, I highly doubt that any other map will get added in. I bet they will stick to their word no matter what. So, now we're going to go look at all these maps that they're added in. There is another map I do plan on releasing here next week that we're going to be looking at. But this week, we are looking at this one. And, yeah. So do go subscribe to the Sunken Worlds if you like what you should see. I will leave a link to the Discord in the description, along with a link to the spawn codes and all that on the Steam page. And one more thing, guys, I forgot to mention. Um, the Sunken Worlds consists of two mods. One mod, which is the map. The other mod, which contains the resources and animals. And first up here, we have the Pacific Coast region. Now, the Pacific Coast region consists of several different areas. And for our first region here, we have the Plateaus. The Plateaus will be the very first region that you spawn into. They're going to be the easy zone. Um, they're going to also be the only region that has a surface obelisk. So the obelisk that's on the surface. And they're also going to be one of the very, very few locations to get fresh water once they've added in the salt water effect. And then another region that we're going to have here in the Pacific Coast is the tidal pools. Now, tidal pools are kind of kind of be everywhere across the map because they are going to be adding in this system or kind of an environmental effect onto the map called uh, tides. But yeah, so basically every throughout the day, some regions are going to have water come up and some regions are going to have water go down. And as you can see here, these tidal pools are going to be the regions where they are affected the most, where the water is going to rise and lower. And in these regions, uh, you got to watch out, make sure you don't have any of your pets in them. So that way they don't get so that way they don't die when uh, the water lowers. Now, that effect is not in the game yet. I did try getting a hold of that uh, mod Syntax used in his video of on the island with the water rising, but apparently that mod's private, so I can't even use that to show you guys what the high tide would look like. But in these regions, uh, when it's low, it's going to be very easy to go down, get silica pearls, all that stuff. Just watch out for some spinos, baryonyx, and uh, there may be even some deadly creatures trapped in the water. As I can see there, there are some siphons, and I do see... Uh, what are they? The guys from Ark Horizons. I see a couple of them down in there, so do be careful. Now, another region that we're going to have here are the coastal inlets. These are basically the rivers. They're going to be affected as well when, with the tides. So, basically over time, some of the rivers will dry up during low tide. And these are the coastal inlets. Uh, do be careful, though, because there are going to be spinos, baryonyx, and all that. And they do kind of work just like the tidal pools you'll find the same resources there but these will be inland more and they are kind of the rivers of the islands so first water region really here is the coral reef now the coral reefs are going to probably be one of the regions that you first explore here it's going to be, be where you get most of your coral kelp and maybe some other underwater berry type such seaweeds and yeah, you do have to be careful here. There are some deadly creatures such as the eels, but there are some peaceful ones such as the dolphins and these little buggers, which we'll get to in a second. Now, another region that you're going to have here are the kelp forests. These are going to be dense, and if you've ever played Subnautica, they are kind of just like that, little intimidating. 
but there isn't too much to worry about. It mostly consists of the same creatures as the coral reefs, but I don't see as many big creatures such as the dunk donkeys and the mozas that keep popping in. And here we have the seagrass. Now the seagrass region is still kind of being under works and uh, from my understanding, but it looks amazing right now. These are going to be basically just large, large underwater fields that are going to be filled with uh, harvestable plants. As you can see down there, we have all that seagrass. And when you harvest that, you're just going to get a bunch of berries and all that. And lastly, here for the Pacific Coast, we have the Sparse Reef. Now, this reef is kind of a dying one where all the stuff is turning brown and dying off. Which, it's just like any other reef. Now, our first part for the Arctic region here is the Arctic Plateaus. Now, in the Arctic Plateaus here, you're going to just mostly find more frozen stuff, quite like the other plateaus, but there's not as much fresh water around. And you're only going to really find some tidal pools here, no coastal inlets or anything like that. And if you look hard enough, you might even be able to find this cave here. <laughs> which, when they add in the tidal, may make it even more difficult to get around in. And for the last region here, we have... What are they called? The Iceberg region. And now, the Iceberg region is still the newest region. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work once they add in the tidal, the tidal things. As you can see here, we do have a bit of a tidal pool here. A large piece of land that would get covered once the water comes in. Um, I just don't know how the icebergs would react. And over on the largest iceberg, you will be able to find the Ice Fortress, which, to me, it gives me very, very Skyrim vibes. When you would go out and explore those, I just imagine some, like, wyvern or something as you're exploring this come blowing up out through the smoke and getting ya. <clears throat> and there is also a cave that will be added in here soon. Um, again, it is again. This map is still a work in progress, so the ice cave is not done yet. But it does look like it's going to be filled with a bunch of Bigfoot. <laughs> and here we have the underwater for the Arctic, the Ar the Arctic Reef. Really, um, these are going to be basically just what is under the ice caps. And I would imagine this gets dark sometimes, especially at night, being covered up. And what you'll be able to find here are mostly mammals. You'll be able to find the their new whale dolphin thing that they added in. I can't remember its name off the top of my head, but you'll be able to find the sunken version of the, like all the stuff really. Um, yeah, again, it's just the Arctic region. I've seen a lot more of the water mammals here, to be honest, than I've seen. I've also seen the donkeys, as you can see there, but yeah. And lastly here for biomes, this really, this is, uh, this is, from the Midnight region, all that stuff that we just looked at was in the Sunlight region. This is the only biome so far in the Midnight region. And this is known as the Glow Reef. And it is just lovely. They're still working on it, I believe. They're still added in them sparsely throughout the map. But you can find Megalodons and Plesiosaurs down here. Along with some Siphon and uh, other small fish. But yeah. Very far down. I imagine when they add in the pressure system as well for when you go deeper, this may be in a pressure zone, but I've also seen a lot of Tussos down here, so do keep that in mind if you're looking for Tussos. Now that you've seen all the biomes, um, there's one more thing. There are other things out there that are still being worked on, but they do have this little barrier here to show you where they have not worked on anything yet and if you go down here as you can see there is a cutoff on what they have not worked on yet but if we go out over this way there are some unfinished islands um i would not recommend if you're playing this on survival to uh come out here this way and build because they're still working on this part you don't know what's going to happen your base might get destroyed so i would say stick in the region that's still being worked on um, they do have this nice border that does allow you to go across it, unlike some maps that had them. Um, I do wish that like other maps did have that, because <laughs> I do remember on a uh, Ragnarok, people used to break out the map, and the actual map creators added in a zone for people that kept breaking out of the, the 
barrier to go build in the desert before it was done but i do like it that they added this um and yeah if you guys want to check out the map more do come and download it i did skip over some stuff i haven't gone into all the regions really there are some other coral reefs that have different designs there like that one that one is a bit more of a crystal cone reef and the one that we looked at looked was over here on the other side of this cliff which is a bit more of a traditional coral reef so i just recommend go download go download this one and play it now we are going to be moving on to the other mod that is a part of the sunken world and that is the one that adds in all the tools and animals alrighty so now the sunken world comes with several resources and consumables that are going to be help you through this world and they're somewhat kind of replacements so as you can see here we got coral this will be a resource that you can use to make the coral dagger and I also believe it can be used as a supplement for stone and alongside limestone, you got plenty of stuff here to build stone structures with. Another resource that we have here is sea scale. Now, sea scale is basically what the sea creatures will drop for you, and it is now the hide that you'll use to craft armor. So it's equivalently hide. Another item we have here is the seashell, which will be used for your keratin and chitin like resources such as cementing paste and armor. And now up next here we have consumables. Now the consumable here are quite a bit. So first up here we have reeds which these are kind of like I believe a thatch if I'm correct. And it's just a thatch that decays over time. And up next we have all the seaweeds. Now these seaweeds from the Kaluro weed to the Venom weed. Venom weed. They're all basically like the berries. You know like how Aberration had all the mushrooms that had the same effects as the berries? Well, these seaweeds have the same effects here. Like the cel celery weed here, this is your stem berry. Well, this Somonian weed here, this is your Narco. That simple. And again, we got the Magna weed here, which is not so tasty. But its juices are apparently great in meals. I'm pretty sure that's what you would use to make purple dyes. Then we got this one here. That's red dyes. You're yellow. You're blue, aren't you? No, you're black. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, you're blue dye. So you would have to be white, black. Yeah, we got all the colors here of the berries, basically, in the celery. Up next, we have kelp. Now, kelp is basically... It's going to be really the food that you want to give your animals it'd be great for taming really it's just something to feed them next up here we now have the fruits now the fruits aren't really all there i'm pretty sure i've tried harvesting them i've not been able to actually harvest any in the wild i'm pretty sure they are there i might have just had some bad luck but first up we have the angelo berry here which this sweet fruit grows naturally on the side on the trees and cliffs um, I tried eating this one I couldn't eat it for some reason but next up here we got the crab nut the crab nut is a coconut and I was able to eat this and I think this was the only one I was able to get and I got it from just harvesting trees so wasn't too bad um, they do come in handy for one of the diseases in the game and we'll get to that here in a hot minute up next we have the curl bean again a banana I have, was not able to find any of these in the wild, but again, they are pretty nice. And then we have the spine fruit and spine fruit, sweet fruit that grows in the ground. Ooh, okay. I I don't know if I got one of those though. But yeah, again, it's just a pineapple. So the only one I was able to get was the crab nut. So I might have just had bad luck with the other ones. I do believe they add on. They do plan on adding seeds for all these. Um, yeah, and again, once all these like fruit rot, they turn into rotten fruit. And again, I believe it also works as spoiled meat, so you can use that as a substitute, but it decays. And I do believe some of these actually just turn into thatch when they expire, which is probably the reeds. So, yeah, another chunk thing that we have here this 
item is only useful in the ice box here, which is one of the structures. Ice chunks. You can get these by harvesting rocks over in the snow biome. But again, then we have the ice box here, which is one of the structures added in. It's pretty simple. It is just a fridge. You're going to need ice chunks from over in the snow biome to use it. Another item that we have here is the coral workbench. This is somewhat of a halfway uh, smithy. So it got some of the stuff you would expect a smithy to give you, such as the firearms and, you know, ammo and all that for them. But you don't have all the stuff that would give you. This, like, you only have chit and armor here. There's no flak or anything. Uh, but yeah, the coral workbench you can just make in your inventory here. It's pretty simple. I already misspelled coral so bad. Yeah, coral workbench. Yeah, just five coral, 20 hide. Uh, yeah, all that. And as you can see here over in the smithy, you are missing quite a bit. Like, the greenhouse stuff, all that. You're missing uh, the corner pieces as well I believe in the structures if I'm correct yeah you don't have any of the corner pieces and all that stuff added in yet so yeah but that would be it for structures and resources now that you've seen all those resources and structures there is gear that you make from those resources and structures and as you can see here the gear I am wearing is known as C scale armor so again this C scale can be crafted in your inventory with seagrass which is another resource that you can get in this that I forgot to get. Sadly, I just realized that I could not find a spawn code for it. So, you do need seagrass to craft the armor and sea scales. Um, once you do have the armor here, you do get a 50% swimming bonus in the current. And if you have the entire set on, you get the set bonus, which will give you uh, stamina regeneration while you're in the water. And now first up for the tools here, we have the Coral Dagger. Now it is just basically a sword. <laughs> uh, you can use it to harvest kelp and seagrass, I believe is what you use it for. Um, also, yeah, again, seeing how I did miss out on the seagrass, uh, this stuff out here is seagrass. Oh, uh, put that away. You should be able to harvest some of it. I am completely wrong. Oh yeah, no, this is the seagrass right here, this plant. Yeah, you harvest those and you get seagrass, yeah. So you get seagrass from the same things as that. Seagrass is fiber. Next up in tools, we have the trident. Now, the trident is a bit of a underwater spear. You can throw it a ways. I'm not sure if you can throw spears underwater. Um, but yeah, the trident is just a metal spear that you can throw. From what I can tell, it is crafted in the coral workbench. It just costs some metal, seagrass, and I believe wood is what it was. Yeah. And with the trident, you also get a skin for it here. This is known as the sunken trident skin. Um, it is crafted in the coral workbench for one fiber. It is pretty awesome, and yeah. And you can just throw it like a spear. And first up here, we have the Anomala Karaz. I've been calling it the Karaz for short, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the Karaz here is the first aquatic shoulder pet in Ark and is also one of the very first creatures added into the Sunken Worlds. Now, the Karaz is kind of an improv to scuba tank. Um, the way it works is if you throw it on your back here like so, just hit E. Um, whoops. Oh yeah, I forgot. You have to be swimming. Um, I was flying there in, uh, creative mode. But if you hit E, he will go on your back here, and as you can see, he's just sitting there, alright? And you can see that he's filtering, but, cause now his thing's puffing up. And if I quickly enable my thing here, and I turn off my god mode, uh, GCM, oh wait, ugh, GCM, okay. As you can see there, I have oxygen for days. I also have scurvy right now, which is an, the effect applied by other stuff I will get to after the animals. Um, but the price of the oxygen from the Karaz is your food. And yeah, for the cost of your food, 
It, the cars will give you oxygen and stamina. And it is pretty actually nice. I would recommend this thing any to anyone. I might actually... Uh, I kind of wanted to add this just to get these creatures because of how awesome they are to my survival series. And now that this thing is added into the mod, what is it? The sponsored mods. I hope they get a lot of like a lot of progress because they already have a lot of great stuff in here and they have a lot more great stuff planned. But anyways, um, another thing that the car has does while you have it on your back over time, it will slowly break down your uh, chest piece. As you can see here, it's ticking down quite fast. It will break it over time because it is t technically feeding off of you. And as you can see here, we're losing food at a rate as well. It's about, what, 0.1 at a time? And it is rapid, too. But it is also breaking it. You also cannot have the Karas on your back when you're out of the water or if you're wearing tech gear or scuba gear. Because of it has the thruster on the back and then again the scuba tank. Also, another thing with the car is, when you try and leave the water on, with it on your back, it will just pop off like so. I didn't even have to hit anything. Again, just pick it up, heads up, boom, pops off. Alrighty. Now, I will show you guys how to tame it. Now, for taming Anomala Karas, you're going to either want... Oh, it's, what is it? crossbow or a pike and what you're going to want to do is knock him down to about 20 percent health where he's going to go into a state known as blood rage and when he is in this state he will get movement speed and damage buff and he will target the nearest player and he will try latching on and once he has latched on you're going to be a bunch of narcotic so that way you can uh Yep, like this. Now you're going to eat a bunch of narcotics, which you should have in your zero slot. Right, let's make sure I'm actually eating narcotics. There we go. We can't actually munch down on narcotics. We can only just do this. And what we're actually doing right now is gaining oxygen from him. Let's actually see if he's up on our taming list. Nope. Eventually he should knock out from eating that. Yep, there we go. And he has passed out. And we got a 120 male here. And as you can see there, I was pooping a lot there from the blood loss. Um, but yeah, now that he is knocked out, we can give him three different things to tame up. We can give him ammonite bile, which is the best thing to give him leech blood or human blood. So let's get him tamed up here real quick. And that, people, is how you tame up in a Karaz. That's how you tame a Karaz. And there we are. And now, let's get on to the next creature. And here for our second creature, we have the Sarikthi. Now, the Sarikthi, much like the Capro, is an ambush predator. Um, it is a very Barracuda-like creature as well, from what I'm looking at. And um, sadly, this creature is not rideable, but they are very aggressive. And I imagine they would come in handy for a water ambush in PvP to swipe some people off the back of their mounts. But anyways, other than that, the Sarikthis in the wild will basically latch onto you like a Capro and drag you down. So, yeah. Um, other than that, let's just get on to taming, which is actually pretty simple. Now, while taming our Sarikthis, you're going to want some Trank Arrows. Because this dude is a KO tank. And now, he's also very dangerous. Whoa, watch out, because that, that is his grapple attack. If that hits you, you will get latched onto. And boom, there we are. He is knocked out. So he'll circle up into that formation. What are you coming after me? I already tamed you. Alrighty, now that that bugger's dealt with. Now the Sarictus, once it's knocked out here, you can give him either regular kibble, raw mutton, prime meat, or raw meat to tame up. Again, regular kibble is going to be best, and what you're going to get for the most efficient one. And as you can see here, he is losing torpor at a moderate amount. So let's just get him tamed up. And there you have it. That is how you tame up a Sarictus. Again, pretty simple. These guys are actually quite cool looking. And they do add another aggressive fish to the water that you do have to watch out for.
And here we have the Sphirna, which is one armored hammerhead shark. As you can see here, it has some chitinous plates along its back, which makes it very armored. It also has some very bioluminescent parts on it here, which gave it got this green on it, which gives it this very toxic look. Now the Sphirna is a bit weaker than a Megalodon, so the other other large sea creatures like the Dunkleosticus and the what are they? Tusos and Moses and all that and Plesias will make short work of you on this. But luckily for you, it is fast. And once you do have its saddle on it, like so, it does add for a rear passenger and a front driver. So you can hop on the front here like so. And whoop, I forgot I was flying when I did that. There is a bug. If you hop on water creatures, you fall if you're flying. So do keep that in mind. But then we can also hop on the passenger seat, like so, here in the back. In which, um, I don't think they have the animation for sitting on it done yet, but hopefully they get that. But yeah, it does look quite awesome here, this creature. Let's hop off the back. Um, but yeah, it is an amazing creature, especially with the saddle. I really like the saddle design. And another thing that they did add, and as you can see here, there is an anvil on it. And as you know, most... Uh, creatures with anvils on their saddles have smithies. So yes, this is an aquatic smithy, which is quite awesome. Um, I don't know how well this would pair with Arc Editions. I've not tried it on this map yet, but I can imagine the Helicoprion and all that would also add great on here. But And would do great. And the only reason I'm thinking that is because the Helicoprion here also is a smithy saddle. But the Siphon, for it to be have a smithy saddle and all that... It would make great, especially seeing how what it is able to do. So, if you hop on this on it, we do got two primary attacks, which is left click, which gives you a simple bite, and then right click. Right click you can use for gathering metal, stone, and coral, and it is just like that. And there is a 30 second cooldown on it. I forgot I need to hit that. Uh, oh, is it not? Yep. Oh, I guess there isn't. Okay, um, but if you also hit C here, you will also enable the metal detection mode, which will allow you to see where there is metal. Um, yeah, and this is very helpful early on because it will allow you to find metal and limestone quite easily. Um, I do believe he only gets a weight reduction on uh, stone and coral. I don't know about metal and limestone. So, yeah. Another button that we can use here is control, I believe. No? see uh, da, 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 da. yeah that's it those are the three controls is left click right click and C so again left click is bite right click is heavy hit and then C is turn is your toggle for metal detection mode and one more thing that the siphon does is it that it receives 20% less damage from attacks due to its natural armor plating so yeah now on to taming now, for taming, it's quite easy. You're just going to want to start tranking. Now, this creature is very peaceful until you hit it, or I guess territorial. As long as you don't get too close, it will not attack you. But once you start hitting it, he will start coming at you. So I recommend you do have movement speed. Because I bet right now, if I wasn't, like if you're not in creative mode, he would be wrecking you. So just keep on hitting him with tranks, or even get him into a cage to tame up. Either or, so it only took a couple trank bears to knock out at level 15. So do keep that in mind that the higher the level, the more tranks it will take, and probably the more damage he will do to you. Now, for feeding the Spheran, you're going to want to either give him. I guess the Ricky wiki isn't too clear on this because it shows both of them for its preferred kibble. Um, so it's either regular or superior kibble. The wiki is very unclear on what it is. I would start with regular kibble. If it doesn't eat regular kibble, try superior. I will also be testing that here. So once once I get him tamed up here, I will let you guys know. Um, but otherwise, the other things that he will eat is raw mutton, prime meat, and meat. So yeah, let's get him tamed up. Alrighty, so it only needs regular kibble, nothing about superior. So forget about that. It takes regular kibble. That is its preferred food, but yeah. That is how you tame up a siphon.
And here we have the Acro Feister. Now the Acro Feister here is definitely a good starting amount. They do spawn more commonly over in the Arctic waters, but you can find them over it by the Pacific Coast region if you head out to the ocean. Um, you might want to tame up an Ichthy first or Megalodon, but these guys are quite amazing. They are a passive tame. Um, yeah, they also have several abilities here, so let's get this one saddled up. Now, for controls on this guy, we got a simple left bite, left click bite, like so. And then with right click, we got a kind of son sonar pulse to detect enemies that functions the same way our Parasaurs does. Except, I do believe to use this, you have to be on it. You don't have an auto setting. So, we also do have a timer on that. Uh, I don't actually don't see it. But there is a bit of a delay there before you can press it again. And then if we hit C here, we do have a powerful headbutt that does do a stun that will last about for 10 seconds. And you can only do this if you're alpha of the pod, so I can't do it right now because I don't have anyone else in the pod. Alrighty, so now he's no longer the one in the only one in the pod, so if I hit C, and as you can see, he does have a red aura. Kind of see it coming up there through the saddle, but yeah, he's now alpha of the pod, it's highest level. So now if I hit C, I got a headbutt. And that only works if they are the alpha of the pod. Now, I do also have another ability which works kind of like a U-Tyrannus Roar. Because, um, as you guys know, a U-Tyrannus in the wild, or well, a U-Tyrannus, when tamed, if you do its Roar, you can call Wild Carnotauruses to ally with you for a short time and they will not attack you. So if I hit control here, I should call nearby Acrophysis to aid. Let's actually head over here towards these Acrophysis over here and see if it works. Because we do got some guys over here. Um, yes. They should temporarily ally with us once I am able to do it. Uh, does that have a cooldown? It does. Oh, it has like a minute. It like has a minute and a half cooldown, probably. Alrighty, I don't, I don't know how that ally cry works, but yeah. Um. Anyways, let's get on to taming. So now for taming Acro Feister, it's a bit different here because they are a creature that has juvenile ones spawn with them, and the juvenile ones you tame much like a hyena don where you have to hold still and let them come to you without scaring them. Um, on the other hand, though, the adult ones, you they will just approach you like Vinicornis, and you just give them the food. And the food that they like is superior kibble. That is their preferred food. And then it's raw mutton, prime meat, and raw meat. So if I just approach this guy here, I have superior in my zero slot, and I hit E boom he takes one and i don't know what level this guy is let's take a look i actually got a couple guys taming out there whoops and he's level 55 and one piece of superior kibble gave me 71 percent into him and i bet he is already ready to be fed again where did you go there you are are you him yep you're him so yeah it's gonna just take a hot minute here for him to be ready to eat again so i'll get back to you guys and there you have it that is how you tame an acro feister and i gotta say these guys are basically dire wolves they are awesome i highly recommend if you are playing the sunken worlds that these be one of your first tames they are just amazing and they are pretty easy to tame again they are just a passive um with juven and well yeah you can tame them while they're in the pod as well. They do spawn in pods, and they are not, like, aggressive until you attack. So, yeah. Just don't attack them. Clear out any other aggressive creatures nearby. And, yeah, you should be good taming these guys. But, anyways, let's get on to our last two custom creatures. And lastly here, we have the Bathia Leapies and Lepidodes. 
Bati Lipi's on the left, Lepidodes on the right. So the way these guys work is that the Lepidode, the one on the right here, is basically going to be the best creature to kill to get scale, the scale stuff to make your armor. And over here on the left, the Bathyr Lepis is going to be a creature that, when given resources, will convert them into rare substances. So, yes. Um, unfortunately, these guys, I believe, are not 100% done. Um, that's what it says on the mod page, that they're still a work in progress. But they do spawn in, and they do work like normal fish right now, like a, co like a cola can. Um, but there is one more thing about them. As you can see, they have genders. So, that means you can tame them. And the way you tame them is just by catching them in a fish trap. And yes, they are breedable. And here we have all the sunken variants. As you can see here, we have the sunken angler, which is pretty awesome. He also does come with his own unique sunken saddle. Where is it? There it is. And with this, uh, can I... Is that not modeled yet? I'm taking it that the sunken one, that <laughs> this little uh, angler saddle is not complete yet, because apparently it's not popping up on it. Huh. Okay. But anyways, then we have the bat. What, what do you? How do I pronounce you? You? Ba Basilosaurus. Yeah, the Basilosaurus. The whale, as you guys know it. Does this one have a saddle? Yes, it does. Let's see how it looks. Again. These are just ones that are crafted with the uh, sea scale instead of leather. So that's the only reason why they're marked as sunken. Then we have the donkey here. And the donkey got a makeover for this map. He looks a lot like, um, you guys, you guys know what rockfish are. They're these very, uh, very invasive uh, fish down in Florida. But they are amazing. If you've ever had rockfish tacos, they are the bomb. And I'm just, I just think that the dunkleosticus, like looking like this is awesome. He also does have a saddle here, I believe. Uh, no, he doesn't. I guess not. Then we have the eel here. Um, these guys don't look too much different than the normal variants, I believe, but they do look awesome. The eels just look pure awesome, and I guess you guys know why. And then we have these little buggers. If you've ever run into an erupted, they've they're just nasty. On Ragnarok, they're, you know that one ship that has that chest that spawns in it. Yeah, these guys are always a big deal when you go for it. Now, the creature I'm loving the most here is the egg bee. I just love its pattern. The zebra stripes. Just looks gorgeous. I think this color is also making it go for me. I just like it. And again, it does come with its own egg bee saddle. Up next, we have the ray, the manta. Now, again, you know the manta. It also has this nice, amazing pattern on it. I've never been too much of a fan of the Manta. I've never really tamed them. I've always gone for, like, Moses or Ichthys for some reason. Never gone for these guys, but, yeah. It looks amazing. I love the pattern. It does got a pattern on its belly as well. It looks like that side's more bioluminescent than the top. Then over here, we have the Mosasaurus. And, yeah. It looks nice. The pattern is amazing. It's got these nice bioluminescent dots all over it. I just think it fits well with the Sunken World. Now, do mind that this guy was designed before the, I believe, R Mosasaur came out. I do believe there's an R variant of the Mosasaurus, isn't there? Or the X? Yeah. But yeah, we do got a tech saddle for it and a normal saddle. I have not seen the tech saddle on a Mosasaur in a long time. I ain't gonna lie, look at that, like, it just, yeah, I, just, I don't understand. I feel like I haven't seen Mosasaur as a tech saddle in just a long, long time. It looks nice. I just now want to tame a, I now want to tame a tech Mosa and put a tech saddle on it. And yes, tech Moses are a thing, they are in the game. Uh, not from the sunken world, but they are a normal spawn. But lastly here for variants, we got the sunken plesiosaur. Now, plesiosaurs have a special place in my heart. They were the first, uh, was it platform saddle in the water? And they just, they just were amazing. I loved it. I remember when the island was first out 
and they added these guys, me and a bunch of friends, just hopped in the water, and <laughs> we were in there for so long. We le we legit lived in the water for probably about a week in Ark, just messing around with these guys. But yeah, I really like the Plesiosaur. It has these bioluminescent and dots all over its back, and it has this nice like fade. So it's like its body consists of like two main colors. So you got that main dark one, and then you got these rings up front that they like fade in and out of those colors, and it does kind of fade into the lighter one out on the tips. So yeah, just looks nice. Just a nice plesiosaur. I love it. Alrighty, guys, and that is it for the sunken eye, the sunken world. Um, if you do want to go check out more, oh wait, I just lied to you guys. I almost forgot. I forgot Giga Raptor sent me over some photos of some creatures that they have been work on for the sunken world. So here we have one of the creatures here, the Altophinax, Altophinax, which is kind of like a water T-Rex, I'm guessing. Um, I haven't seen much else about that. I'm not going to go into too much about them. Um, if you do want to read up more about them, they are in the, is it the dinosaur tab on their Discord. So if you want to read up on these guys, do go look on their Discord. Now, lastly, for another, the other photo that he sent me of a creature they've been working on, we got, what is this? Hendios. Hendios, which is a turtle. Yes, we got another turtle coming to Ark. This dude is awesome. Again, if you want to read up on him, go to their Discord and look. Alrighty, now we can do the outro. So, if you guys do like the Sunken World, please go check it out. Links in the description to their Discord and mod page. Um, and yeah, if you guys like this content, please do leave a like and subscribe. And I do plan on posting uh, videos on the daily, and I do have a series that is ongoing. And yeah, if you guys like it, please subscribe. And this is Gunshy signing off.